Yes. If you guys remember from the previous lesson, we were on the slot called Kishis. Previous, previous actually. Previous, previous. Okay. I was not here last week. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so today is our very first um, session. So first of all, we would like to wish our students welcome back for your short semester. Yes, welcome back. <laughs> and uh, for information, we have a very, very special guest. So the Pokemon. So mm-hmm. who is Yes, we have Dr. Lawrence Lowe in the house. So, Dr. Lawrence Lowe is the founding president of my printis and my school of life. Is it, Aim? Yes. Yes. I would love to share with everyone who he is in his biodata and all. But I think since the owner of the body is here, how about we ask him himself? So, Dato, tell us a little bit of yourself. Uh, thank you so much for having me to, uh, this morning. It's a wonderful morning. Uh, it's a wonderful campus. I've been here uh, two years ago. Oh, and oh. Uh, I still sasak. <laughs> I still don't find my way. But uh, thank you so much. Uh, a little bit about myself. I'm uh, 33 this year. Very young. Wow. I'm not too young as well. Uh, of course, I now publicly tell people that I get married. I'm, I'm married. I have three kids. And um, also, I run this uh, youth empowerment NGO, which is uh, my practice, mm-hmm. uh, which is why I'm here today to share uh, with you guys about. I graduated in uh, the Bachelor of Science in Biotechnology in wow. Monash University, but of course, I'm not doing anything in biotech now. <laughs> so, uh, hopefully, in the future. So, yeah, that's a little bit about me. All right, that's great. See, hear that? That's Dr. Lawrence Lowe for you. Okay. So, so um, uh, Dato is the first, uh, founding president of uh, NGO organization, so can you tell us more about My Yeah, My Paritis is an NGO that runs youth empowerment programs. We are very young, we are only 3 years old. We started in the uh, year 2015. Uh, but a little bit about how uh, I came about with My Paritis is uh, very, it's a very interesting story. So uh, 3 years ago, as a youth myself, I'm still in the 30s, I felt that there's a lot, 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 lot more things that you can do for the youth uh, in terms of empowerment, in terms of knowledge acquiring programs. So I realized that there's a lot of gaps in between the youth and to the government, to the public, or to whatever that we're discussing over here, coordination. So from there, I said that why don't we start, you know, by trying to organize uh, events and uh, uh, workshops for the youth. And then from there, we actually snowball from one to two to two to four. And then that was how uh, I decided that I can't do this again under my personal capacity. Uh, then I said, all right, let's uh, look into an NGO. Uh, and that's where I had the idea to form this organization. So, uh, from what we have known, uh, yeah. my core focus is on this Aspects. Yes, uh, the three education, employability, and entrepreneurship. Yes. So, why why this uh, the emphasis on this? I, I realized that uh, among the youths, uh, there's a lot of things that the youths are very interested. In. Uh, there's a lot, and it's very diversified. Uh, but the it doesn't um, leave these three main core things that is very close to your heart. Uh, education, employment, and entrepreneurship. Uh, students in the universities are looking forward for employment or maybe they want to have their own startups. Education is something that we are doing since we're born, right until at least, uh, you know, for today, it's a minimum of bachelor's degree or master's. So this is again something close to the youth. So uh, this three core focus is the one that will shape uh, most of the youths today. So I felt that this is the three main focus that uh, we have chosen. But not limited to it, in my practice, we have also focused, uh, we are very all-rounded. We have been focusing in a lot of other things as well, uh, mental awareness, financial literacy, and, and more. Yes. So I think that's like, uh, you know, that sums up like the, maybe the objectives yes. of the... Yes. Uh, thank you. Yes. Yeah. So I think since uh, I, I've read on the on the website yes. that my printer has been established since 2015 correct so it's been like three years until correct. now so it has been three years yes. so what can you tell about 
how uh, the growth of my printers itself. It's a very interesting journey in my printers. I started this alone, so of course uh, at that time uh, it was very very based on uh, my ideas and the things that I felt that it was important. But along the way, of course, we have evolved when we, uh, we have more use uh, that has been become part of my printers family. And then we have now engaged with more university students and even my staffs, you know, themselves are used. So that's how, number one, we evolve uh, internally. Then most of our programs are catered uh, specifically to youth, um, very youth-centric. And uh, that makes our program not so boring and uh, it's something that is acceptable by the, the community, the youth community. So I think this is a very important group uh, because you need to create programs which are uh, relatable to the youth. You know, if you do something that is kadang-kadang we say short sendiri yeah. or things that are not relatable to the youth, they will find it not very interesting and yeah. they will not be interested to be part of it. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good strategy, you know, okay. adapting to the society's yes. needs and uh, I mean, uh, suitability. Correct. Yeah. So that really attracts, you know, the people, yes. especially the youth, because the youth are easily shaped and influenced. Yes. So that's a really good strategy, in okay. my opinion. And uh, so, you know, uh, speaking about youth, uh, youth empowerment, there are uh, some more uh, activities or NGOs that tries to use the same uh, concept yeah. for their journey or yes. for their game. Correct. So, so to say. So. You know, uh, I've been to the National Aspiration and Leadership Summit, NAUS, uh, NAUS yes. and also we have TEDx Youth. Yes. So, how is my print is different or special from this? You know, so yeah, special is a very strong word, but let's yeah. put it this way. Uh, a lot of organizations are very focused and very specific on uh, certain things that they want to focus on. Mm. Uh, but for my print is, we are actually quite all-rounded, that's what I, I would love to say. Because uh, we must always make sure that uh, youths are not only, you know, they have so many things that, that is within their pocket. Mm-hmm. You know, it is not just about one. It is a lot of NGOs that says, okay, we are only focusing on education, for example. Mm-hmm. There's one NGO that is only focusing on mental awareness, for example. Uh-huh. So they are very uh, focus driven. And I'm not saying uh, anything, but they are doing a good job as well. But I felt that my apprentice should be more diversified. I think uh-huh. that, is, that is the first thing that I very um, particular that I felt that we should not only be on one focus but anything that is relatable to the youth I think that is one so in all my printers family you know the youth in our community they can you know they can venture into so many things you know if they are interested in volunteerism for example mm-hmm. we have a lot of programs and supports uh, that are running uh, volunteering programs uh, we, if they are very interested on let's say for example something on startups mm-hmm. entrepreneurship we have done so much of work with uh, MOF, with Magic, uh, with uh, Credo, and etc. So again, in my printers, it could be one platform <coughs> that they can find their interests, all of their interests in one place, uh-huh. uh, rather than uh, being hopping around or trying to see which are yeah. the right people to go to. I think that is one of the biggest uh, it's strength that we have. Strength. Yes. Good. Basically, yeah. the uh, diversity of the focus. Basically, my printers aspires to be an all-rounder. Right? Yes. Yeah. Exactly, it's very good. Yeah. So I also noticed that my printers are in the uh, website, yeah, yeah. like my printers and my school of uh, life. Correct. Yeah. So yeah. like, maybe know that what are the difference? Is it, is it a sub branch or yeah. is it the same? Uh, well, uh, my printers is an NGO. So my school of life is a business entity that runs uh, business uh, business deals to continue to sustain uh, my printers work. Uh, we could call it social enterprise. That's what people have been using. So uh, all the <coughs> profits of my school of life uh, goes to my printers to scale up the work. So for example, uh, if some of our sponsors or our partners um, have funds to do programs for 10 schools, uh, for example, last year, uh, we had a sponsor that only able to let us do English literacy program for 10 Ulu Selangor schools. Oh. But because we have a business entity, which is the school of life, mm-hmm that is then able to put in the profit into my printers, we are then able to do all 17 schools in Blue mm-hmm. So that is the, the function uh, to continue to create business and sustainability to uh, my printers' uh, work. Okay. 
it's, in, it's, it's a symbiotic relationship. Exactly, so because we can't be always dependent on sponsorship. Yeah. So this is something true. that again, I'm, very true. yeah, this is something again that I'm not very keen on. Uh, mm. Of course, I'm more than happy if you want to sponsor, but uh, we <laughs> yeah. need to be also a bit business centric so that with the profit, uh, you can scale up the work you Yeah, I agree. I agree to that. Thank because, you. Uh, we are involved in student psyche before. Yes, and sure. we know how hard it is to get sponsorship. Yes. yes. The process, the application. Oh my god! Yes, yes. and that is if it's approved. If it's yeah, not, this thing. if it's not, then you have to look for you know tons of people. Oh, okay. yeah, I totally understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think we should take a break. Sure. Yeah, a little bit short break, and when we come back, we will continue talking about my apprentice and their future. You know what are the plans and you know all this stuff. Right. So. Alright, we are back in a special slot, uh, the journey of my apprentice and my school of life with our special guest who is in the content uh, this morning, Dr. Lawrence Lowe. So before the break, we talk about my apprentice in general, about Dr. in general, and also uh, how he has grown since the three years of his establishment. So now our focus will now uh, will shift to its future plans and the, maybe what are the hopes for the organization itself. So, Dato, uh, it's coming 27th. Yes. Uh, will be the third anniversary of the right. Yes. Uh, and you will have a, an anniversary dinner yeah. with Yang Ahmad Brahmat Tun Dr. Mahade, our Prime Minister. Correct. So, how uh, significant uh, does this attendance to your anniversary dinner uh, will be yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Yamak Bromat, Prime Minister, is not uh, <coughs> a stranger to my practice. Mm-hmm. Um, since three years of inception, uh, Yamak Bromat has always been the patron, and in fact, the name of Printis came from him mm-hmm. uh, to also honor his uh, idea. Uh, he has Padana Leadership Foundation, yeah, yeah, Sangsa Pipinan Padana. So I went and see him three years ago when I actually wrote to him to, uh, for him to invite him to speak to the youths in regards to Vision 2020. Mm. So of course then I have the intention to form my printers and at that time I was uh, not decided on the name of the organization and I uh, went to see him and I said why don't we call it the Youth Leadership mm-hmm. uh, Foundation since he is having Padana, Padana Leadership Foundation. <laughs> so he told me that Lawrence, I felt that you know if you want to be a youth you know, uh, organization. You do not want to always uh, be seen or be always telling people that you are trying to become a leader. Mm-hmm. I think that is the most important part because you need to be with the le- the youths. Yeah, you need to be with them. You need to sit with them. You need to talk to them. So, uh, you know, being a leader, you may have a gap with these people. So the yeah, youths will find it. Oh, he's a leader. So hmm, maybe uh, I will <laughs> not tell him everything that I feel. You know, because youths are. When it comes to leaders, youths are maybe sometimes more, you know, uh, they keep it to themselves, you yeah. know, they felt that, oh, you're a leader, so it's okay lah. I, I don't want to tell you uh, what I feel, you know, truthfully. So then he came up with an idea. He said that you should be the trailblazers. Mm-hmm. You should be the parentis to all nation building efforts. Mm-hmm. So to be honest, I then um, uh, actually uh, Google uh, trailblazers and then it was brought to parentis. Which I felt that it is true. The youth should be taking charge. Uh, that's why I always said in my in opening speech, I say youths should not only be the leaders of tomorrow, but the leaders of today itself. Mm-hmm. So the name itself came from him. So uh, from there, we shared a lot of common ideas of what we can do for the youths. And of course, Tun, like I said, has, has not been a stranger. But the only difference now is he's the Prime Minister. <laughs> so uh, of course, I still respect him as uh, as our patron, uh, but of course, in addition to uh, being a prime minister, we have more things uh, uh, we can plan to do. Uh, we can actually uh, do more for the youth and the community. So for me, it's more about uh, the youth. You know how far we can reach and how big we can reach, or to what different other communities that we may not have been to. Maybe this is time. Mm. Talking about the future, actually, um, recently in our national affairs, we have a lot of. Yes. Really involved. 
So what is your response to this new involvement from I think it's very interesting to have a 25 years old Minister of Human Sports, which I think sex addict, why be sex addict is somebody very famous in your campus as well. Yes. So yes. it is always uh, good to, important to empower the young people, but at the same time, we have the uh, older people, the generations to be there to guide you. So it is never about, for me, it, is, it was never about politics. Uh, when I had him as a patron, I was also definitely asked to remove him as a patron. Uh, 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 but for me, it's no. For me, it's about learning. It's about the experience working with these people that has so much of experience governing the country. 22 years, it's just he becoming a Prime Minister previously, but there are so many things that we want to learn from him. So it's important to let the young people, because they have fresh ideas, they think out of the box. Uh, they may have a different way of doing things. Um, yeah, that's right. So it is impo important to let them have the opportunity, but uh, guided, guided opportunity. So mm -hmm. I think uh, we have to thank the current government that is giving. And I I knew that there is a lot of ministers which are below forty, below thirty five. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, it's important to give them the trust, and at the same time to guide them, uh, you know, for a better decision making. Mental protective station. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because yeah, it's true. You have a lot of opportunity, a lot of ideas. Correct. But sometimes uh, we, we we can we can we tend to be impulsive. Yes. And we tend to do some really silly things in, in no, the process. It is okay to be yeah. silly. You see, sometimes mistakes, we learn yeah. from silliness. We, yeah. we learn from silliness. You know, from myself. You know, I you know I'm still 33. I mean, to a lot of people, I'm still big youth yeah. you know but we're heading to not so youth but anyway we have done a lot of silly things during our <coughs> lives you know uh, as a kid myself in preschool in, in yeah. primary school we have done a lot of things but we learn yeah that's think, how we learn yeah that's how we learn so but sometimes silly things also spark ideas yeah it's quite for improvement exactly uh, about the dinner itself yes can you tell us more about it like uh, why Yama Muhammad Tun Mahathir will be there yes uh, it will you know who are the uh, who will be present at the dinner? Yeah, where it will be. We held. are very thankful for all the partners that have been with us for the past three years, uh, be it from the private sector, the universities, and etc. So uh, that night is actually a celebration. Uh, it's an anniversary. It's our anniversary, and we, will, we want all our partners to be there to also witness what we have achieved uh, for the past three years, and also at least what is our next two years uh, plan ahead mm -hmm. of 2020. So uh, I have met uh, the Yamak Bromak Prime Minister uh, a week ago to get uh, some fresh ideas on mandate of my priorities and uh, we are in the midst of uh, creating uh, more programs that will help to uh, have a mind shift of the current youth uh, to instill the three values of honesty, discipline and hard work among the youths. Uh, for the future, as we are gearing towards Vision 2020, we are looking into a high income developed nation. There are a lot of things that need to be done. So that night is just a night where we gather the partners, we gather the youth NGOs, we gather all our friends uh, to witness that this is where we have come so far. And hey, we are moving on. There's more things that we can achieve for the next two years. And we look forward for their support and uh, their participation for the next two years. So it will be a great night. And uh, Yamak Bromat will be there is, you know, to also uh, be made known of there are a lot of people that are very keen and very interested to contribute to the youth empowerments in Malaysia. It's very amazing. Thank you. Uh, Alright, so now it's the last question. Yes. Uh, what are your plans for the future? Another break? Sure, a little short break. Yeah. Alright. We, uh, thank you so much for having me again today. So we, this year, uh, as 
as I mentioned just now, that we want to continue to create more initiatives that are able to help the youths or be able to work with the youths. Uh, but at this time, we're going to focus a lot on the three values that we felt uh, that we all should go back to the basics uh, of honesty, hard work and discipline. So this is also the three values that was also given to me by the Yamak Komat when I saw him last week. That as a youth, even myself, he said, even myself, Lawrence, you should be having these three values. Uh, which I felt, it's true. Sometimes we are overwhelmed with so many things, so many new you know, things that is happening, not only in the country, but also in the world. That sometimes we have actually forgot or actually left out some basic uh, values that is uh, in supposedly instilled with us. You see, even if you want to be an entrepreneur, you want to see that you are hardworking, you have a discipline and you're honest. And that happens as well if you are in a job. And even as a friend, you want to have an honest friend, etc, uh, etc. Et so, um, this year, we hope to continue to, to, to do what we do. Uh, you know, our school outreach, our uh, What Malaysian Youth Should Know workshop series, we will still continue with our entrepreneurship uh, uh, initiatives, programs, outreach, but uh, we want to focus on these three values to be instilled in all our programs from now on. Yeah. yeah, that's true, because uh, even if we talk about you know having soft skills such as entrepreneur, exactly. entrepreneurial yes. and all, but then if we don't have the three, you know, the basic value, Correct. morality and all, exactly. it's no use because we will become robots and not human beings. Yes, yes. yes. and then I think integrity and honesty is something that um, a lot of people are uh, discussing today. Mm. Uh, but of course, uh, practicing it from the early days of our lives as a kid, and as, a, as a student, I think it is also very important to start young yes. you know, for these three uh, values. <coughs> So speaking of, you know, you've been mentioning your, you met uh, Yamak Bro, Matan uh, yes. and discusses things with him. So I'm curious, what, what what does it feel like, you know, working up close with the Top Guns? You know, because <laughs> like me, yes. uh, previously, I, the highest uh, people I've met is basically the dean of the faculty. Understood. Yeah, so you know, I want to know what it feels like, you know, uh, working with somebody really... Yeah, uh, prominent the prime minister. Yeah, himself. the prime minister himself. Well, uh, it is of course. Uh, I know I've started working with him for the past uh, three years, and uh, you know, of course, the first few time meeting him, it was not easy uh, because sometimes uh, I always share this joke. It's not a joke, but I always share this funny thing when I, the first time when I met uh, Yamak Roman uh, Tun, uh, I wrote to him and I said that we will really love. I would really love to see you. To say that I have this idea, this big plan, you know, we want to consult you and see how it goes. And uh, when I first saw him, I actually asked him a very silly question, uh, but it is something that I remember for the, you know, for the rest of my life. I asked, uh, I went into his room, and I said, you know, Tun, good morning, how are you? And my first question was, do you know why I'm here? <laughs> and he asked, he answered me, no, I don't know. So, <laughs> at, at, yes. No, I don't know why you are here. And uh, at that time, at that moment, I just felt that, yeah, he would have been briefed by his secretary. Uh, why is Lawrence here? Who is Lawrence? What is the intention of the meeting? If, yeah, not, if yeah. he wouldn't agree to such meeting. So at that time, I felt, you know, I just asked another silly question. <laughs> uh, uh, but that thing, uh, he is a very, um, he's a man with a lot of humor. Yes, I think yes, you, he you, 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 yeah. He, <laughs> yes, he is very sharp. Is, is very clear of what he felt not only for the youths but also for the country yes. so of course when I saw him again a day before Raya uh, uh, when he's now the Prime Minister uh, I was a bit uh, you know uh, excited but yeah, I'm also scared at, 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 that, at that time I was telling my friends and uh, my team went with me I said you know Better make sure that I don't say something wrong because <laughs> now he's the Prime Minister you know <laughs> so uh, but when I went in uh, the feeling is the same. Just that man that I've met for the past three years, uh, the same person with the same vision, uh, and I can say he's sharper than ever, as his plan, as his aspirations for the nation building, uh, for the youths. So, very quickly, we went into the conversation as usual. So, it was not so much of like Prime Minister and uh, right, yeah. Bauer, right yeah, now. Correct. There's, yeah. uh, there, uh, I think there is still a gap because of 
you know, I still respect him so much. Uh, sometimes yes. I'm really scared that I really say silly things. But, <laughs> but yes, there is no gap in terms of uh, what we believe that we can mm. do for the youth. So he is very inspired and he is very, sh- you know, um, he has certain things that he's very keen and interested in the technology, youth empowerment, etc. etc. So we are very quick to go into conversation. Uh, what are the plans that we can do ahead uh, for the future of not only my practice but also to the youth in Malaysia? Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, so yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think uh, even sometimes we as a youth we put kala lah. <laughs> so, uh, we by four o'clock we already half, you know, uh, you know half drop date. But he <laughs> he has been you know going in and out. Yeah. But yes, I think everybody. Has been wishing that hope that you take care, but I'm sure he will. Yes. I'm sure you've been a lot. You've been going to a lot of universities. Yes. <coughs> yes. So generally, what can you say about our youth? Mm. I think the youths is uh, like I said, they are very interesting. Uh, even I myself, you know, like I said, we are very vibrant. We are very. You know, we get angry easily. We, you know, we get sad easily. You know, this is youth. We are very emotional. We are people that are very emotionally attached to certain uh, things, and uh, you know, we make decisions just there and then. So uh, it is normal as young people. But I, why parents is because I realize we need to make informed decisions. The most important thing about youth is to make decisions based on the facts and figures that you get. That is the most important part. Because we are always driven by different factors when we make certain decisions. I make decisions because I hate you, or I have a you know I have a prejudice against you. But this is something which we hope not to see among the young people. So most of our white Malaysian youth should know serious. We have speakers coming to share insights and things that you know that is happening around the country with facts and figures. Then we leave it to uh, the young people to decide what is right and what is wrong. So I still do talks for Yamak Berhormat even before the election. You know, we gather them. Uh, Tun has also shared certain things that he has in plan for business, for economics. But for me, it is always about let them share the idea, and the young people will know how to choose. So the informed decision is very important. So you do not want to have youths that make decision based on, you know, emotion or based on. Uh, wrong figures, wrong facts. Yes, you know, yeah. yes. So I think youth generate. They are fine. We are very fast. We are very, you know, we are very, um, you know, we, we we if we say we want to go, we will go. We will climb the mountains. We will go down to the sea. Uh, but most importantly, the right decision. Helping them to make right. Exactly. That's good. So, I think we approach uh, our last question. Sure. Yeah. So. Basically, what are your hopes for your organizing for upcoming years? I, in in three years of my work, I've seen a lot of youth NGOs working in silos. Uh, even in universities, there are also a lot of youth and student associations, bodies, uh, um, committees that are everybody working uh, on their own, and also has been uh, also you know trying to make a difference. So. In my future hope is uh, we could hopefully be you know the uh, platform for all organisations uh, together in one single focal focus uh, platform uh, to make a difference uh, for the youth community in Malaysia. So because uh, like as mentioned by the DJ is that it is not easy when students want to run programs. Uh, not only financially, but also in terms of experience, yes. in terms of getting your ideas validated. Yeah, yeah. This is something that sometimes uh, youths also find it difficult to have access to certain people that we may want to consult because these people are busy. The C level, uh, uh, you know, corporates, GLCs are very busy, so you are not able to get hold of them. Mm-hmm. So a lot of sponsorship package uh, pro- uh, proposals, <coughs> you know, sometimes just get rejected. But but these are very good initiatives. But some initiatives. Uh, could be combined, you know, uh, to to make a bigger impact, uh, more, you know, in a in a in a manner where you have uh, the budgets, uh, the money that is spent well 
more well spread than everybody working in their own silo community. So hopefully in future, uh, we hope my printers can continue to make more friends, to make more you know acquaintance with other associations, other NGOs, uh, because we can't do everything as well. Yes. So we really hope to continue to build the partnership and then to make, really make a difference for the Malaysian future leaders. For, for impactful, <laughs> impactful Impact. collaboration. Yeah, exactly. Alright, so my practice is has provided the platform. Correct. What about the youth? What the from their side? What, what efforts do they need yeah. to do to be an informed individuals? I think I youths think. are also uh, youths need to sometimes take initiatives. Yes. I think that is the key thing. Uh, of course, youths have a lot of interest in different things. You know, uh, sometimes they rather spend their time playing Dota, uh, <laughs> which is fine because I too, I too play Dota sometimes. Sometimes, not now, but last time. I'm a fan of Dota even during my time uh, in in uh, in my university. The only hero I know how to use is Zeus. That's about it. <laughs> but there, but there's a lot of people who like to you know, uh, sometimes only spend time doing things that they like. But sometimes they should know that actually there's a lot of things that is affecting their life as well. There's a lot of policy level or uh, you know big decisions that are made by the government may affect their life in good or bad. Yes. So they need to take the initiative to find out, right. to know, to read. I think this is another thing Ahmad Brahma is is doing Find until today. Yeah. He reads. Yeah, he reads. At the age of this, and with his work, he still reads. Every time when I see him in his office, when I go into his room, he will be reading. What books, documents, or whatever he will be reading. I never see he, you know, send yeah. WhatsApp, you know, <laughs> playing on the phone. I think young people, if you go in generally, they're holding their phone today. True. Yes, True. Uh, you know, like my staff, Instagrams <laughs> and filters and blah blah. blah. Well, every time I see him, ten times, all ten times, he's reading. So this is something that I felt, uh, you know, you uh, could step up, take a little bit more initiative, read a little bit more, take knowledge <coughs> of. Uh, more things, and then that's where you can then say that you are making informed decision on certain things. Inspire to be like Tone, people. <laughs> yes, you should. You the should. three values. The three values, yes. exactly. Alright. Alright, so, uh, right, so uh, I think uh, we have reached the end of this. Sure. It's like we're going to wrap up. It's time to wrap up. Like, yeah. So, it is a good initiative, Dato, sure. uh, for my printers Thank and you. also it's a uh, you know, symbiotic partner, sure. symbiotic, sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, my school of life. Sure. Uh, and we hope that your effort will actually bear its ultimate fruit, you yes. know, getting the youth to be more involved sure. and uh, helping the youth in their, you know, uh, making informed decisions, as you say. Exactly. Yeah. So, Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. So yeah. uh, we're more than happy, uh, you know, to come join us for the dinner, uh, uh-huh. as uh, you can get to see, you know, more youths as well from other organizations, mm-hmm. other NGOs. Get to know them. You know, some of them are really doing fantastic job. You know, get to know them, and a lot of C- CEOs or and a lot of uh, that is also a good uh, informal platform for you to get to know these people. So uh, join us. And yeah. thank you so much for having me today. Yeah, thank you. we thank you for guests. for being our guest. No, no, no problem. Same. Thank you Huge so much. Pleasure to have thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I think that is all uh, for today. Thank you to the listeners for joining our special slot, uh, journey of my apprentice and my school of life. So, Shala, we will meet again soon. <laughs> yeah, maybe next week. I don't know. Uh, so, thank you again, Tato, for being thank you. here. Thank you for, for having me. Spending your time here. And yeah, I uh, think we will stop. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye. Bye. Bye.